just spend a few minutes and talk about a subject that is near and dear to the hearts of so many in the religious area, born again area, hell. <laughs> Beautiful hell. I don't know what they do without hell, right? We are kind of, uh, I would guess I would describe ourselves, and you too, some of you, you know, that support this thing, are a, a band of mystically led followers of Jesus Christ who are waving a white flag of peace amidst the warring sects of religion, you know. I don't mean, I don't mean just they don't trust one another. I mean that they really get violent with one another. And let's face it, most wars that have been fought in the, in the world, in the world's history, are religious wars. Everybody's split. Once they put a label on you, they got the rest of the world mad at you. One of the things, you know, there was a story. I really love this story. But Shakyamuni Buddha was alone in the forest with his closest disciple, Ananda. And Ananda said to him, let me ask you a question since there are none others around here. He said, are you holding anything back? And Buddha says, Ananda, you have never seen anything but the palm of my hand because a Buddha has no fist. And, and I thought as I, as I read that, that, you know, there's never been a war fought in Buddha's name. Did you ever think of that? Of all of the young people who have died, of all of the children who have been killed by the bombs of people dropping bombs in one another, and names of religion, and whatever it may be, there's never been a war, and there's never been one bullet fired in Buddha's name. That's quite a record, isn't it? That should make us all get on our knee and at least tip our hat to the Shakyamuni, who taught people the way of life and love in the inner kingdom of nirvana and peace, as did Jesus Christ. You know, we, we are warned, you see a lot of these evangelists who know so little about the mysticism and where the heritage of even the Bible comes from, but we're warned by so many of them to beware of the teachings of the East. And yet, you know, it's really, it's really interesting because scholars have shown that just about every Christian belief has its origin in an Eastern rite and in heathen rites. I mean, the, what, the most holy day on the Christian calendar is a pagan holiday called Easter, named after the goddess of sex and fertility, Ishtar. I mean, I, you, and, and yet they'll point a finger. This is a fact. They've replaced the day of Jesus Christ's resurrection, re resurrection with a day that is celebrant of Ishtar, the goddess of sex and fertility, complete with the eggs and the bunnies that are part of the fertility rites from the Babylonian times, and yet they'll point a finger. And this is, this is their holy day already. Give me a break with this. So then how do we, you know, how do we form symbols into things of fear? And why does that happen, you know? I mean, Christianity has taken symbolic things and made them into things that you fear as if they're real. I mean, the Christian version of hell is simply an idea out of the Dark Ages, and its purpose is onefold, and that's to keep you in line. That's what it was made up for back in the times of the Dark Ages. They started to tell people, if you don't do this, you're going to hell, and they got everybody to go in line because people believe them. How do you know? I mean, nobody's ever died. Maybe they're right. Maybe somebody died and came back and said, oh, hell's over there. Don't do this. See, there's one characteristic difference between modern Christianity and the old heathen faiths. And you know what that is? Both of them believed in an inner Christ, a heaven and a paradise and all of that kind of stuff. The difference is that the ancient people had no devil. That, that's, that's totally, an, that's an original with, with, with us. That's our, that's, our, that's our thing. We originated the devil. Is that something? The older faiths had no eternal fire-burning hell. See, modern Christianity has as a center of its belief a personal devil and a fire-burning hell. I am here to announce, on the authority of the Bible and the authority of Jesus Christ, there is no hell. There is no hell. It does, there is no such place. And stop being afraid of it and never mention it in your house and, never, and stop scaring your kids with it. There is no hell and there is no devil. Devil is simply evil. Let me show you what devil is. Come over here, Frank, to the magic board. This is what devil. You want to see what devil is? Devil is what? Evil with a D. That's all it is. It's a word. Evil. Well, you know what is God? God is good. 
right? With an O missing. So what is the whole thing about? The whole thing about is good against evil. The higher and the lower, the higher mind and the lower mind. That's all it is. That's all the whole thing is about. And we've taken these symbols and we've made people out of them. And we've got a guy with a red suit and horns and a pitchfork running around, chasing Jesus through the cactus bushes. When actually the story of Jesus in the desert is the story of a man who doesn't know which way to turn. He's in confusion. That's what desert means. And why do they have this evil with a red suit on? Because the color red means the emotions. And they're just saying that the evil is what comes from man's emotions. When your emotions are out of control, that's the red horse of the four horses of the apocalypse. The red horse stands for emotions. What was hell? Hell originated in where the root of it came from, is a place called Hades. H-A-D-E-S. Now where does that come from, Hades? There were four brothers in mythology. One received control of the upper part of the earth. The other can received control of the eastern part of the earth. The other received control of the western part of the earth. The other received control of the lower part of the earth. The one who received control of the lower part of the earth's name was Hades. And out of that, we got the fact that Hades, it's hot as Hades. This guy wasn't hot. What is this? We, got, we made up a hell out of this, and you got people going to hell. There is no such place. Let me ask you a question. <coughs> After you leave the body, your spirit, how does, a, how does a, a, a physical fire burn a spirit? I mean, it's ridiculous. The whole thing is so doggone ridiculous, and yet people live in the fear of that because they've been taught that by religion. And it is absolute paganism, it is superstition, it is nonsense. There is no such place. I think Buddha had the best description of hell. Hell is a concentration that we make on our own perceived agony. The ancient Scandinavian myth, and I'm going to show you where it came from. That was Hades, that was the first step of it. But there is an ancient Scandinavian myth, and it talks about a place called H E. L. And do you know what? It was a place where it was cold, where the people went. It was, it was, no, it was a place where the people cold, because this place is up north. And that was the beginning of it. And this is the story of hell, and I want you to listen to it. Come on over here. The white god Balder, B-A-L-D-E-R, sent Hermit, a son of Thor, into H-E-L to find the beloved child. Now, indeed, they found her in the lower region of H-E-L. But she wasn't writhing in agony with flames consuming her. She was sitting on a rock reading a book. Now, it does, it, those people, don't, nobody ever believed that there was any kind of a creator God who constructed a place with fire that would burn people up forever until the Christians of the Dark Ages came along. The hell fire is a place of purging. Fire means spirit. It is the place where that fire burns through the lower aspects of your consciousness, burning up all of the things which attack you. The ancient European kingdom of the, of the lower place, as I said, was a place where it was cold. I mean, it's just all superstition. There was no miserable, damned sinners in these places. The Egyptian place was a place called Amenti, and it was the region of judgment. The Hindu was on Hera. And what these places were to the ancient religions were intermediate states in which a person has the opportunity to prepare for a higher life by having their wretched mental condition purged out of them by the Spirit of God. Here's where hell comes from. Hell comes from the fact that the Bible uses the symbolic word of fire. But it doesn't mean a fire in the way that you understand fire. Fire in the Bible means spirit. That's why it says that in Armageddon, God's going to rain down fire from heaven to consume the earth. It doesn't mean real, burning, ouch fire. It means that the spirit comes down from the higher consciousness to purge away all the things which have hurt you, the diseases which have hurt you, the fear which hurts you, the anxiety which hurts you. Now, in the New Testament, the hell was Gehenna, and Gehenna was a garbage dump outside of the walls of Jerusalem. And Jesus used it as a simple metaphor, that's all it was, to show where the minds of people are and how the fire 
of God is all that can possibly purge away the hell condition of consciousness. It's a garbage dump. And the garbage dump is your mind. And in the garbage dump of your mind is where that eternal flame, which is spirit, can consume all of that garbage and set you free from all of the hurt. But as long as you persist of your own free will in staying in the lower consciousness, you're staying in hell. It is not until you rise up above the lower consciousness to the higher realm of consciousness that you go to heaven. Heaven is not a place, some place out in space. It's in you. It's your higher mind. Hell is your lower mind. So where did this eternal hellfire and powerful devil of Satan Christian theology come from? Because it has held millions of people into bondage. And you know the amazing thing of it? The Apostle Paul says that no such power of the devil exists. Let me repeat that, because some born-again Christians tune in here occasionally to see this nut rambling on. There is a statement by the Apostle Paul that no such devil exists, that no such hell exists, because the Apostle Paul in Romans 13.1 says, there is no power but God. Then why the nonsense? Why are we frightening children? I mean, for God's sakes, what do we do? A kid's no sooner born and we tell him, oh, you're going to do that, you're going to go to hell. God's going to punish you. The devil's going to get you. Now you've got a kid that's a couple of years old and he's uh, got, having a nervous breakdown and he's afraid he's going to hell. He's looking under his, uh, his bed for a devil. You know that's true. Then you put him in Little League, the kid drops a ball, he disgraces the family. Now you've got a seven-year-old on a guilt trip. Then you get him and you get him in a church and you tell him God's gonna is preparing a nuclear war called Armageddon. Watch television on TBN, they'll tell you all about it. The mad bomber, Van Impe. Yes, here he comes with a nuclear explosion. Jesus is coming back in a hail of bullets. Now you really got a neurotic. And so what happens? He's gonna send him to college, gonna be like daddy, so he can have a psychiatrist just like you. What are we gonna do? We'll send him out to college, he's gonna be a lawyer or something. He can't make it. His grades are lousy. He's come through hell with the devil when he's a little kid, dropped the ball when he's in the middle end. He's waiting for Armageddon to come with the nuclear attack. Now he's not living up to his father's standards, so what does he do? Goes to the top of University of Princeton and jumps. Teenage suicide is the second leading killer of teenagers. Why? Because of all of the guilt and fear we put into these people through the superstition of all of this teaching which comes out of the religion, out of the dark ages of Europe. And that's where it comes from. Instead of understanding that God is love, Jesus is peace, and they dwell within you, and they live in the higher realm of consciousness to set you free and give you peace and allow your life to become a flower of love that you may interrelate with all of the people of the world, with all of the animals of the world, with the oceans, with the forest, and with the trees, and be one with all that is life.